Hey, I'm Renee, but you can call me Blake. And this is the Oh My God Show. <laughs> it is so good to see you today. I, If I sound sleepy, I just woke up. It is a very, very, very late in the afternoon. But uh, this has been my life. So <laughs> I am really trying to push myself to exercise. Sometimes I just want to sleep. And then when I don't want to sleep, I want to eat. Oh, the emotions and the moods of this uh, <laughs> This period, oh my gosh, we're gonna have a lot of stories to tell when this is all over. But today I am really pushing myself. So I got up and I'm like, okay, girl, you gotta make yourself useful and get your skipping on today. And I I still feel like the sleep is in my system, but we are going to fight the sleep because we are in charge of the flesh. The flesh is not in charge of us. Well, it's the Bible said we should put our flesh under subjection, right? <laughs> so we're going to put our flesh under subjection. Oh, that's a lot for some. I forgot. But yeah. Okay. So before we start off with the exercise, um, this passage of scripture has been on my mind. John chapter 3, verse 16 to 20. Um, most Christians probably know this passage already, especially John um, 16 and 17. Um, but I was listening to uh, American gospel comedian, comedian called Michael Jr. and he was saying that he found out in one of his sets I heard him saying that he found out that um, Jesus Christ died for him when he was like 21 or in his 20s and I was just like okay so we shouldn't take anything for granted so that's why I feel like I would definitely um, still want to um, say the scripture even though um, a lot of Christians I think sometimes we assume that people know things but they don't because nowadays too a lot of people are not really raised in church or even if they go to church i find out that a lot of people don't really read the bible so if the pastor didn't turn to a scripture or talk about a scripture maybe they would never hear it which is very sad for people so if you're one of those church going christians who don't read the bible you should start reading the bible i'm just saying okay so anyway let's go to john um 3 verse 16 it says that for god so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. In, in 17, he says that, For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Or this, um, this uh, what do you call it, um, translation says, For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. Uh, whosoever, whosoever believes in him is not condemned, but whosoever does not believe stands condemned already because they have not believed in the name of God's only um, one and only son, right? Um, this is the verdict, right? Light has come into the world, but people love darkness instead of light because their deeds were evil. Everyone who does evil hates the light and will not come into the light for fear that their deeds will be exposed. But whosoever lives um, by the truth comes into the light so that it may be seen plainly that what they have done has been done in the sight of God. So basically God's objective of coming into the world to die on the cross for our sin is to give us salvation is so that we can come to him so that we can be a part of his family so that he can adopt us as his sons as his daughters uh, but uh, the thing is that some of us we don't like that we don't like God we don't like the things of God we don't like light as the Bible says um, so whether you get saved or not is usually your choice you get to choose the Bible says in another scripture that there is um, I present before you life and death and then he says choose life but we are the ones who are left with that decision. So I hope that your decision today would be to choose God, to choose life. I mean, somebody died for you. I mean, that's a pretty big deal. It means that that person must really, really, really love you, no matter how sinful you are, no matter how dark or deep in sin you, you have found yourself. God is willing to pull you out. God can pull you out of anything, just about anything at all. And, um, but you have to ask him, you have to believe in your heart that he is able to do it, he's able to save you, he's able to change you, and he's able to do all of that and more. Um, so there, yeah, that's my scripture for today. And um, yeah, sometimes too, as Christians, um, the fitness part of our life is kind of um, left out. 
I don't know if you expect Jesus to wake you up and make you run or walk or eat properly. But um, for me personally, that has been a part of my conviction too. And uh, when I worked in the health field, I realized that, you know, you have a lot of nice good church people, but they didn't really, um, like a lot of us, I would say they, like our taking care of our health, even just not as church people, but our health is not really our priority, like our work or school or whatever it is. But the irony of the whole thing is that our body is our vehicle. And if we don't take care of our bodies, then it can't really carry us very far. So, um, yeah, so sometimes I slack up as well. And because, <clears throat> you know, the thing about our bodies is that the flesh is weak. And all the things that we're supposed to do to make ourselves better is usually hard to do. Whether it is serving God or studying for an exam or doing anything that is productive, we find that... Um, it's sometimes not very easy and there are a lot of time when I skip or I walk when I used to have the chance to walk um, and I didn't want to do it or I didn't feel like doing it and sometimes I'll just be like uh, well we are going even if you don't want to go like I am telling you that we are getting up and we're gonna do it so um, yeah it's not all the time that I'm in the mood to skip or do anything especially here now um, I really just want to sleep and eat and just chill out but if I do that then I'm going to have to reap the benefits and the consequences and then here is getting tight and all sort of stuff. So anyway, enough of the talking. So I have told you in previous video that I skip and I haven't stopped skipping. Um, but on the days if I go fasting or something like that, I don't do it. I don't know if I should, but I just don't want to push myself. I've never really tried it. But if I'm not fasting or um, I'm just here, I think I should skip as much as I can. But there are some days when I get lazy and I don't do it. Um, but let's get to the, the thing. So since I started skipping, I think I've kind of improved a little bit and I am trying to see if I can do five sets of 100. Um, I don't know um, yeah, how tired I would get. So even if I don't get to do it completely, I will just still finish my 100 rest, do another 100 rest, do another 100 rest, another 100 rest, and then another 100 rest. Oh my gosh, that sounds a lot. If anything, I will stop at 300, but let's see. things I get distracted or if I were going to go like on a very long walk then sometimes I would have oats or cereal or something because so that I could I would be able to finish with energy and stuff like that so you have to really know your body if you've just eaten for me if I start jumping up and down I'm gonna feel bad so Sorry, I just need my water. Oh, let's get this out of the way, guys. Two. 
200. Okay. Let's do this. Okay guys, I'm actually tired already at 300. I'm gonna need to take a rest. I don't know if I can complete the other 200 off camera. But guys, I'm tired. Let me get some more Holy Spirit and then I'll come back. So I'm bled, I'm cutting. Like, comment, subscribe, and try to see if you can beat my 300 tips at home. Just let me know. Um, take care. <laughs> Bye, see you next time.